And now we're going to have some fun. Favorite question ever. This isn't in your workbook, but I have written the question so it's really, really brief. So if you want to do a quick note of it or you want to sketch it, you probably could do, or you can just follow along with me on my screen and then let me know if this makes sense. So basically here, we've got a DNA molecule and it's being cut into fragments and we're using two different restriction enzymes that cut at different recognition sites because they've got different active sites, different enzymes. So DNA fragment cut by restriction enzyme one is marked with a straight line. So let's go over it in color. So restriction enzyme one is gonna cut the DNA here and here. Restriction enzyme two is cutting where you've got arrow headlines. So let's go over those in blue so we can see them. Okay, so that's restriction enzyme two. Let me try and do that again. Why can't I do a straight line? Awful, okay. So they did two different experiments, and please do stop me if there's anything you don't understand. In experiment one, the DNA was cut into fragments using only enzyme one. So what I would do in the exam, ignore the blue cuts, because in experiment one, we're only cutting it with enzyme one. So I would probably, underneath, I would draw, this is probably what I would have done, I would have drawn the length of the fragments that I would have got if I had just cut the DNA with enzyme one. Yeah? That makes sense so far? Now in experiment two, the DNA was cut into fragments using both enzymes. So now let's draw on what fragments I would have got if I had used both enzymes. Okay, does that make sense, guys? So I'm kind of just carefully looking at that fragment at the top and I'm imagining it's been cut by both enzymes. So I'm cutting at the red lines and the blue arrows and I'm figuring out how many fragments and roughly what sizes. How do I know that? <laughs> so I'm cutting it with both enzymes. So I'm gonna get this fragment, this fragment, this fragment, this fragment, and this fragment. And I'm trying to draw it on underneath so I can actually see kind of roughly what sizes those fragments would be if I had cut at all four of those recognition sites. The line shows where it's cut, yeah. So the red lines show where enzyme one cuts, the blue arrows show where enzyme two cuts. If I'm using both of those enzymes, I'm gonna cut in all those locations. So I'm gonna get one, two, three, four, five fragments. Complete the gel diagram to show the relative positions of the bands. So what I would do is I'd start off with experiment one, now for experiment one, I know that I need to draw three different fragments on my gel. And I can see that I've got one that's really big, so it will not travel very far. I've got one that's kind of medium length, and I've got one that is shorter. Yes, exactly, Holly. In experiment one, I've got three fragments, so I should draw three fragments on my gel. In experiment two, I've got five fragments, so I should end up with five fragments on my gel. The diagram was labelled with the cathode at this end and the anode at that end, so I know the DNA is put into the cathode and I know it moves towards the anode because DNA is negatively charged. So I'm kind of, if I number, if I number these for you, that might help as well. I'll number the fragments. So when I cut with enzyme one, you get this really big fragment, which is not gonna travel very far. You get kind of a medium sized fragment, and then you get a smaller fragment, which will travel further. Will they put the lines on the exam or do you have to guess? No, they, this diagram at the top, Holly, was given. So they showed you 
the DNA molecule and they showed you, just like I did, where enzyme one cut and where enzyme two cut. They showed you that. Yeah, I drew over them. Do you want me to rub it out so you can see the original diagram? Okay, now this is where it's going to get trickier. Experiment two, I obviously have five fragments, but I need to show the relative positions. So I can't work out exactly how far they're going to move, right? Because I don't know the size. I don't know the mass. I don't know exactly how long they are, but I should be able to show the relative positions. So can you see this fragment here is exactly the same size? So I should draw that one in exactly the same position. Yeah, because it's exactly the same size, isn't it? If I cut with just enzyme one or I cut with enzyme one and enzyme two, that fragment would be exactly the same size. Now, my very, very big fragment that I had. If I just cut with enzyme one, can you see that that's a little bit smaller? Down here. That's a little bit smaller now, isn't it? So I'm going to have to draw that a little bit further along. And then I've got three other fragments. This one, this one and this one. I've got these three fragments and they're all a little bit smaller than fragment number three in the first experiment. They're all a little bit smaller, so they will all travel a little bit further. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> the doing the drawing, I, I would have had to have do that done that drawing. Now, it didn't matter exactly where you drew them as long as the relevant positions were correct. So you would have got one mark if you just drew three in lane one and five in lane two. So if, if you just messed up the positions totally, but at least you knew you'd have three fragments in experiment one and you'd have five fragments in experiment two. If you just had three and five, you would have got one mark. To get the second mark, they had to be in relatively correct positions. So for example, in experiment one, that's got the biggest fragment, so it should have traveled the least distance. Experiment two should have traveled a little bit further because you've had a bit cut off the end. This fragment should have been in exactly the same position because this fragment two was exactly the same length in both experiments. And then fragment three in experiment one you've got two smaller pieces and you've also got a smaller piece here. So you should have then had three smaller fragments traveling further. I think that's, so, I think whoever wrote that question, that's such a good question. Would you label them one, two, and three? No, I was just trying to do that to help you understand it. But that's how you would do it. That's how I would have done it. I would have loved that question. <laughs> But I would have had to do the drawings. I wouldn't have just been able to visualize it. I would have had to like, I'd have messed this diagram up. I would have been like, okay, so if it's just this enzyme cutting, I'm going to get one, two, three fragments. Whereas if it's both enzymes cutting, I'm going to get one, two, three, four. I would have had to do that. Does that help them? Those of you that were asking me about that. Yeah, it was only two marks. Sorry, it was only two marks. I think, I think, 